Okay, one, uh, unit 1.7 is on complex valued problems, uh, particularly complex valued time harmonic weights. Finite element spaces can be built over the real field or over the complex field in NG solve. I don't know if it can be built over some other things. Can you build it over quaternions? Or... Okay. No, okay. 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 Yeah. Just checking if there's some secret features that are. <laughs> so here's an example of a uh, Helmholtz equation with a weight number omega uh, together with imp impedance outgoing boundary condition. We need complex arithmetic for this. Um, the I, the imaginary unit in Python is 1J. Um, don't go wild with that. It's just, just uh, I think electrical engineers like 1J. Here's a geometry made in OCC using a, a circle and a thin scatter inside the circle. And let's, let's draw it and then you'll see instead of me trying to explain the code. Here is a, here's a scatterer and here's, a, here's air surrounding the scatterer. Okay. Once you make the mesh, provide it, uh, it into H1 and give this flag complex equals true and then you get a complex value finite element space. And the rest of it is similar to what, what we've been seeing. U and B are the test and trial functions, and then you can make uh, bilinear forms and so forth. Uh, here, in this problem, the source is coming in the form of a pulse when it's located inside the domain. So we're putting the pulse over here, and, and it's a time harmonic problem, so the pulse is going to create waves that's going to hit the scatterer, and, 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 and then get scattered. Okay, we do the uh, finite element integration by parts, you know, and uh, formulation of the, uh, of, the weak form, of the weak formulation, incorporating the boundary condition, the boundary, the, the boundary condition which was over here, in case you forgot. This is an impedance or outgoing boundary condition, first order outgoing boundary condition. And so the DUDN that came out of the integration by parts gives you this i omega u term, that's the weak form, and that weak form is implemented right here. When you have a lot of terms in, in, the, in the bilinear form, uh, this plus equals syntax is useful. This has been instead of the one-liners. And, and we put the pulse in here for the linear form, and we, we now have both the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the matrix system that we need to solve. Here is how we solve the matrix system using the inverse. There are no free doubts in this problem. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, everything is freed out in this problem, so uh, we don't have to provide that flag. Uh, and we're drawing the solution as soon as we invert this, uh, as soon as we perform this inversion and solve the problem. And there, there's, an, uh, there's a new flag, I think it's new uh, a week or so, or, or less. Two days, <laughs> two days. <laughs> since two days ago, there is this, uh, there is this option. From today. Oh, to, from today. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, th this essentially uh, allows you to take this stationary solution, multiply it with e to the i omega t, and produce a time harmonic solution, which you can then uh, visualize as as a as a video. Okay, let's see. Okay, now you can sort of see the scattering happening, hitting the scatterer. Uh, if you open the complex, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is animated. If you don't have that, you can switch on and off the animation. Ah, yeah, mm -hmm. right. This, this button is automatically checked because of that option that we provide. Oh, you want, okay. Okay, you can go crazy with, with deformation. Where is deformation? Here. Yeah. How about that? Hold it, hold it, yeah. Okay. So, what is the animation? Just multiplication by e to the i something t. Dude. Sorry. And, and then taking the real part. Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, important. Yeah. Okay. So it just, you can. It automatically does what you want for your life. 
basically. Yeah, for time harmonic problems, yeah. yeah. Uh, how do I get out of the, uh, who's okay, here, yeah, there we are. Okay, so, I, well, I think we already saw this. We explored the web GUI, we, okay, I should, I should, I should, I should tell you where is the real imaginary part, it's over here. In this eval, you see the real imaginary part and the norm, and norm is the absolute value. So you can view the absolute value if you want, uh, but then the animation doesn't make any sense because the absolute value doesn't change. Um, okay, 